So you're joining us for a special podcast as part of Black History Month. We're down at Stadium MK uh, with the MK Dons youth guys. Uh, two players, two young gentlemen with me today. Guys, let's just start off. We're going to be talking about role models. Before we get there, uh, who are you? Well, uh, what I want is name, position, age and career highlights. Go for it. I'm Keon. I'm 18. I play midfield and defender, so like a box box for midfielder or just like centre back, right back, anywhere back across the back line. Right. And career highlight thus far? Um, just making my professional debut last year, in my first year. Excellent. And how was it? Were you, were you ridiculously nervous or were you like, nah, that's easy? No, yeah, but before the game, I had the idea that I was going to be in the squad, but I thought I'd just be on the bench. Yeah. And then I started the game, so it was like, I was really nervous <laughs> when I was walking up. When, when that name came out, you're there, you go, I'm sorry, I think there's been a mistake. Or were you like, no, no, this is happening. Which one was it? No, nah, my heart just dropped. I was just <laughs> like, oh, wow. Like, it's actually yeah. coming true, like my dream. Cool. Uh, little congratulations, little round of applause for that, you know, definitely. Um, and you, sir? Uh, my name's Dam Ray. Most people call me Dam. Uh, 16, midfielder. More attacking back and still play the box-to-box -box role. Right. Um, my career highlight just made my debut as well nice. this year. Amazing. So where, uh, who, who did you play? Who was the debut against? Uh, Watford. Right. Watford, yeah. No, were you nervous? No, nah, because my debut, I didn't get much much time. But right. So I was nervous when they, when they called me to warm up. When <laughs> they said two minutes time. I was a bit nervous then, but, you know. Is it? Because, I, mean, like, <clears throat> I mean, I'll talk about my career in a bit, you know what I mean? Uh, Sunday League. <laughs> <laughs> they still talk of it. They still talk of it. Um, but, you know, the excitement of... Like even pre games in the little games I played in, your nerves and your stuff like is it hard to control that, or is it like no, do you get trained to control that or it, it, you can't train yourself to get nah I, I think like as you as you go on in your career, then mm. you obviously get used to the nerves, but you still have that kind of nerves, but yeah. more to the start of when we're youths, it's probably more like yeah. nerve wracking you know what yeah. I mean you can't really control it unless you're like like start breathing and just trying to find do ways to... I was going to say, do you actually do exercise? Do you know of exercises to do to sort of calm you down and stuff? No, nah, I don't really, nah, no. I don't really do that. <laughs> I'm going to lie. Saw it on TikTok. So <laughs> yeah. That'll do this. <laughs> Off we go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah literally. Well, so round of applause for you, Dan. So you. Well, well done, chats. So um, the, the point of this podcast is talking about role models. Um, and so before the podcast, I always ask you to just have a little think about role models from your life. Uh, I'll start with you, Dan, actually. Um, so, role models and that you've got from, from your life, from career so far. What have you got as an example? Who would you, you put out there as a role model for you? Probably my mum, definitely, because obviously she's, she's been taking me here, there and everywhere my whole career so far, you know what I mean? And she's just been there for me. And, like, she'll support me always. And, like, as a, as a solo role, to be fair, yeah. just her. But yeah, probably and does she know about football? Does she? Is she? Is she? Yeah. Is she a fan and a critic, or is she just a fan? Nah, she's both. She's both. Is she, she is both. She she's getting there. She's, <laughs> nah, she is getting there. Obviously, it, it, around my house, it's just been football, so right. she's kind of just clocked on and started learning from then. Right. Off me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does she? Does she think she knows more than you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she, she does. That's a mum though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You don't know nothing, Dad. You <laughs> taught Aunt. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. <laughs> well, did she play football? Nah, nah, she didn't play football. Like I that. think, but you know, I think it's really interesting, isn't it? Because, you know what I mean? When your mum, uh, you know, when she was growing up, the women's football was, was very much, there wasn't as much of it around. And I think the, the, the mum's, of your generation as you guys grow up. Yeah. Mum will know about football, you know what I mean? Certainly there's the options. Right? Um, uh, and uh, did she, was she also the taxi driver, the nutritionist? You know, oh, yeah, you know? yeah, 100%. She always cooking, always taking me however far. Yeah. But yeah, it's been... Without question, and that's sort of what mum's doing it. It's lovely that you picked your mum out as a role model as well, because I think, uh, you know, in, uh, some of the time we... we automatically, particularly with you guys, you know, professional footballers to be, we go, oh, it's about football, it's about football. But it's great that you you know already understand that actually role models can come from any point in your life. Which you know. Keon, what about you? Role models, sir? My role models are my parents and my older cousin. Okay. Yeah. Uh, parents, obviously, sim similar sort of with dad, yeah. supportive. 
Uh, what, what else do they do for you? What sort of stuff do they do? Well, they just guide me with everything I do. So if I'm making a rash decision, they'll actually sit me down and talk to me through it yeah. and just make sure that I'm mentally like prepared for whatever's going to come for me. Do you still listen? Nah, I do. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. But that's it, isn't it? You know, when, yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah. when you were a kid, you go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you go, oh, well, I don't like betting. <laughs> nice. Do they still come to the games? Yeah, they come to home All of and them. away games, yeah. Nice. Now, uh, it might be a generational thing, but when like my folks used to come to my games, there was always some that brought soup with them, you know, one of the fans. <laughs> Your mum and dad, did they do anything? <laughs> like no, no. <laughs> they try, don't, don't embarrass me. <laughs> Most I'll get is, is a tuna sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> they bring sandwiches. Yeah. Oh, do, they, do they bring one for you as well? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Only for away games. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Oh, bless her. Yeah. Is. And who was the other one? Sorry, you said your mum and your dad and... My older cousin. Okay. Uh, a footballer? No, no. He goes to university, but just the way he's carried himself around like life and whatever he does, I just want to like be a person like him because he's like a very positive person as well and I want to like have those traits as well. How much older is he than you? He's only three years older than me. Okay. Yeah. So he's still, he's still young? Yeah. At what point do you... Within that, at what point do you think he became a role model? Do you know what I mean? Is it is it yeah. something uh, like you go? Do you know what? I, I, as a, a little kid, on yeah. <laughs> really went. Do you know what? That's that's the guy for me to sort of follow. Or, you know, when, when when do you think? Um, everything ever since we were younger, actually, because we grew up together. So like, whenever we went on holidays, he was there with me, and whenever I went like to a Liverpool match, because I support Liverpool as well. Ooh. Yeah. Damn, who are you? Arsenal. Oh, mate. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> I want to talk about my Luton fan heritage. Oh. <laughs> Look, we had a good seat. What? We were Premier League. Nah, fair enough. Fair, fair enough. Thanks, thanks. Fair, <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Do you know what? You can't hate a Luton fan. You know what I mean? Because you just go, oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he used to take you to the Liverpool games and stuff? Yeah, he used to come with me to the Liverpool games. So nice. Like, whatever he'd done, I just wanted to do as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's nice. I'd say it's lovely that you picked out family. In terms of uh, well, let's go, let's go the other way. In terms of footballers, and you know, within the career that you guys are, are going to develop into, have you got any role models within that that you look up to? And that might not be Cristiano Ronaldo, but or you know, the, it might be somebody at the Dons or any anybody any role models within that? Do you think? Oh yeah, Thierry Henry, I'd say definitely because he used to play for Arsenal. Obviously, I've supported Arsenal, and like when I watch him, they're just that click, do you know what I mean? But also, I seen his documentary one time on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I have you watched that? I'm not no, sure if no. Watched it, but now on you, on he, was just, on YouTube, okay. he was just talking about his lifestyle and like how how he grew up and stuff. And obviously, he grew up quite like a tough tough times, tough environment. But he still like kept at it, yeah. like kept going and found solutions to the problems and stuff like that, which is quite inspiring. It is inspiring, yeah, and you're right. I think it's, it's interesting when we go to footballers, we go, look at their ability on the pitch. Actually, it's their abilities and what the, the adversity and stuff they've come through off the pitch sometimes that makes you go, amazing. Um, I'll see your Thierry Henry documentary, which I'll, I definitely will look out for. Have you seen the Pelé documentary? Yeah, I've seen that Again, Do you know what I mean? Again, yeah. it's, it's that stuff like you leave you know, the ghettos that they're living in and stuff like that, and he came out of that. It's, it's phenomenal. It's interesting you pick out that as a, as a part of a role model, it's not just that, it's that that creates it. Nah, he is a great footballer as well. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I totally remember everything you know. <laughs> what? I could have done. You weren't there. <laughs> Kira, what about you? How about football, like uh, role models there? I don't really have a role model within okay. football because okay. I look up to like quite a few players just by their traits like on the field, but I don't really know them as much off the field. Okay. So no. like I'd name Van Dijk as one of them because he looks like a leader yep. and I'm a leader myself. So yeah. like that trait like relates to me as well, but off the field, I don't really know them as much as on the field. And that's really, again, it's, it's compartmentalizing and going, I understand their function on the field and I can take that as part of a role model, but actually, you know what I mean? Whereas you, your folks, you know them from start to finish and you like, you know, they're a role model in every way. That's a, uh, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? You know what I mean? And I suppose for you guys, when you're training, you train, Defence, midfield, you know what I mean? You compartmentalise on the... So why wouldn't you com make, make certain bits of people role models? That's interesting. Um, so when it comes to being role models, which in fairness, you know what I mean? You're on a path where you could well become role models. 
is that a scary thing for you, Keon? You know, being a potentially? Um, not really, because um, I feel like the way I act will be a positive way for like the younger people, or even the older people as well, as they know that um, if I'm like well with what, what I do. So mm -hmm. if I'm doing something, I know it'll be for the good and like it wouldn't have a bad look. But it can be a bit of pressure as well because people are expecting a high expectation of you with whatever you do. Because if you do something like wrong by accident, like everyone will look at you like, well, he's meant to be this, that, that. But if you do something good, then everyone will just be okay with everything you do. Do you, uh, do you deal with that by self-reflection and you go, before you, do, like, oh, and again, I was talking to the, the guys in the second episode, we talked to some of the guys, and the difference now, because you guys have your media presence on social media, and you know, I mean, you're so much more accessible than generations gone. I know I don't look it, right? But you know, when I was growing up, there wasn't social media. There, you know what I mean? A text was a new thing, it was crazy. Whereas you guys, you know, images and stuff and being out there, do you have to constantly be aware of that when you're, when you're doing that? And how, how, do you deal, how do you deal with that? Now? Yeah, yeah, you, you always have to be aware. Obviously mm. the media is get, it's growing now. Mm like a lot of stuff around the media and stuff like that. But it's also about have, being disciplined mm. and like knowing what you're doing before and to see if it has a positive or negative impact on you. Um, especially like when you might have friends around you and stuff like that, that can go into the wrong paths and you might, you might have to go to that path and be disciplined and like keep at what you're doing. Yeah. Because the media will find you out. Yeah, yeah, Somehow. yeah, yeah. And it is a worry, isn't it? Because ultimately, you know, it's not going... Once it's up there, it ain't going anywhere, you know. In term, yeah, it's, it's a different thing for you guys to deal with. Um, um, but same questions to ask Keon. You know, I mean, is, is, is there any worries for you about becoming a role model? Is that, you know, it, or do you go like, well, if I do the right things? Mm. I mean, the expectation will come with a, with a bit of pressure, mm. naturally. But also that expectation and that sense of you getting the recognition can also be like a, a motivation side aspect to it, if you know what I mean. But at the same time, it can be kind of like, oh, people are looking up to me, I have to like Make impress sure. and yeah. keep my standards quite high. But as a footballer, that's, you know, cool. that's, that's yeah. what you do. I think it's interesting that you talk about becoming a role model as as uh, something to push you forward because uh, you know you think because i wonder if that's the case for people that are going right well you know like Thierry Henry you wonder if look it's not i am a role model and i want to be and i want to be a great role model you know is that something that you guys are sort of aware of yeah 100 percent. even to like within people that i know or like family mm. like of younger course. family for them to look up to me is quite like a sense of um, I don't know, like a sense of like pride, pride yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's interesting. And as uh, so, I like, Kim, you've mentioned, you know, I mean, your role models are within your family. So reflecting that back to them as a role model, that's that's got to be quite inspiring as well, I suppose. Yeah, because I've got a younger cousin that also plays football as well. So okay. I want them to like look up to me as like a good, like a positive way instead yeah. of like a neg negative way, because what I do, he'll do as well. Yeah because he's looking up to me and he comes to watch my football matches and like he always tells me like points that I should improve on. <laughs> I don't think he knows as much yet, but... It's where he gets the ball yeah. and he goes, right, you ran there. Oh, <laughs> did I? Well, thanks, thanks for noticing. Yeah. Ah, nice, 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 nice. Um, so, moving forward, guys, uh, what's the career goal? Do you know what I mean? So, look, we're, we're steps... <laughs> well, first of all, the career goal is to get, 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 get your boot back, back off. Yeah. So, how, how long till we're, we're back in action, you reckon? Weeks, like four to six, maybe six wow. weeks. With that, just sorry, just to go on as an aside, like injuries and stuff like that, uh, how damaging is that for your morale and mentality? Because you know, you, you, is this your first serious injury as a, as a, yeah, 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 yeah okay. Aside from a concussion, like I had a concussion before, okay. but this one physically is like probably more like another serious injury, but yeah. it can be hard mentally to be fair especially not being around a group as much and like it's not the normal to you so you have to adapt and try to look at the positives out of it but at the same time when we have important games coming up 
and I'm not the availability of me is yeah. not there. It's kind of like disheartening, yeah, and yeah. especially you've got a big game FA Youth Cup coming up as well, and I'm yeah. not sure. You're clamouring to get there, yeah, but you know it's your. But I'm not sure. Man. And do you, uh, within those moments, you said about your mental toughness and all that. Do you have to bear in mind that you are still, you know, a role model and you are still doing all the? Is that is that conscious, or you go, I just got to get this right, and it doesn't matter about anything? Or do you have to try and be broad-minded enough to realise that? Yeah, I do have to still be broad-minded, but. At the same time, the main focus is getting fit, but still like keeping my standards high, trying to get here on time, trying to continue my rehab, trying to exercise at home, icing at home, yeah. and stuff like that, trying yeah. to be disciplined and yeah, yeah. trying to get back fit quicker. So, sorry, we'll go back, thank you. We'll go back to Korea, okay. So where's the goal? What's the ultimate thing? In, I don't know, 15 years time, you're sitting back here and I go, so, I see you're all wearing your England gear or you're wearing whichever, you know, your national, is that it? What, what's, what's the goal, Kino? Let's start with you, where, where, where would it be? My goal would be able to play and represent for my national team, yeah. so Jamaica or England, yeah. and also becoming an established professional footballer. Yeah. So like Premier League. Nice. That's what every kid's dreaming for. So yeah, yeah, yeah. hopefully one day I'll be playing in that. Liverpool. <laughs> Any team in the Premier League. Oh really? <laughs> Just a Premier League or oh, you'll ooh. go abroad. Oh yeah, good question. Yeah, I'd have to go abroad as well, just to experience like football because everyone says Premier League's the hardest, so yeah. I wanna see how Premier League is and like right. other leagues like Italian, Spanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe even the MLS, America. Yeah. So anything. That's why that's why you would end your career. If you had if you had a place in your career, where would you end your career? Spain. Spain. <laughs> nice. Fair enough. Spain. Fair but it has to be like a like a big club in Spain. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so you're not following the money nowadays, like a oh, couple of footballers maybe. Nah, I'd have to be, because I've always wanted to be a footballer. And yeah. With football, money will come as well, mm -hmm. hopefully. So. Yeah. But just enough. following my dreams. Yeah. No. Nice. But you. What about me? What? What with your football? Where do you want to play? Oh, where do I want to play? I have to say the Premier League. Yeah. I'm going to lie. Playing at the top top divisions, being elite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we, like, you, you mentioned internationals and stuff like that. Do you think about that even, like, now? Because for me, it's like, wow, you guys are, you know, you play professional football. You know, this is amazing. But do you, are you already going, well, the next step is, the next step is. Is that how the brain works? Or do you go, no, this is this is what I must concentrate on? Or is it always there in the back? How does that work? No, it will, it will always be in the back of your mind. Even when you reach a milestone, you would think about the next step and yeah. how you can reach another milestone ahead yeah. of that. There's always another step to football. Yeah, 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 definitely. So, okay, big question for you, right? Liverpool fan, Arsenal fan. Yeah. <coughs> Would you play for Everton? Would you play for Tottenham? Oh! Oh! <laughs> um, like, oh I'm gonna be sick. Oh. <laughs> Go on, no, seriously. If they get, I mean, oof. I would. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I would. I would. I would. <laughs> I would. I would Tottenham. I would. It's a big club. You know what I mean? Oh but. dear! This interview will come back and bite. <laughs> They paused for a second. Yeah. Yeah, Everton, yeah. Everton's a big club, I'd, yeah, you, I'd love to Yeah, you'd be all right with that? Yeah. Before your Spanish adventure, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Me and Dam are coming around for drinks while you're in your pool. <laughs> avocado inflatable and stuff yeah. like that. No, I'd love to play for Everton, playing in the Premier League. They've got a new stadium coming as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just an opportunity for yeah. anyone yeah, yeah. want to take. Yeah. It's really interesting. Guys, genuinely interesting to chat with you. Thank you very much for sparing us the time. Uh, very best of luck with the season. Very best of luck with the right foot. I hope that gets better yeah. soon. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank today. you. Thank you. Cheers, guys.